Hi, I'm Katie. Welcome to Yoga Awakening. Welcome back to your home yoga practice. This is week two of At Home, uh, which is our March yoga series all about practicing in your own space. So this week's theme, we talked about deepen, deepening our yoga practice, and we talked about that in the context of our yoga asana practice. So basically everything that we do on our yoga mats. So we'll get started. We'll get started in Shavasana. And if you have a yoga block, that's great. Bring that and bring that along with you to your Shavasana, just somewhere where you'll be able to reach it in a moment. We'll be using that in a moment. If you don't have a yoga block, no big deal. You can grab a big book. I like to take a big book and then wrap it in a thin towel, something like that, just to make it a little bit more comfy. You could even use a small cushion. Um, we'll use it just for a few things. So you can also do all these exercises, these movements without the yoga block, and I'll tell you how to do that as well. So let's get right into it. Come on down to your back. Go ahead and close the eyes for a moment, or if you prefer to keep a soft gaze. Give yourself plenty of space. Take up that space you have around you. Widen the arms a little bit away from the sides of the body. And then let the weight of the body start to sink down into the ground underneath you, supporting you. And we'll start to listen, listening to the breath. So returning back to this practice of listening and observing. As we draw the attention to the body, into whatever experience is arising. So feel the inhale, moving the body. If you notice, where the breath is in the body. Is it lower down in the belly? Or higher up in the rib cage or the chest? Feel the exhale in the body as the air releases completely. Just noticing here if you're familiar with any breathing techniques or pranayama, as we say in yoga, if you're familiar with any of those, you can, of course, start to deepen the breath and move into a pranayama. But really, what we're focusing on in this practice is just just listening, listening and noticing the natural breath as it is. So don't get too caught up in whether the breath is deep enough or whether you're doing it right. We'll look a little more particularly at some pranayama in week three.
Keep drawing your attention inwards and inevitably you get distracted, you're distracted by thought, a memory, a plan. Use that as an opportunity to draw the attention back into this present moment as we listen. Feel the breath moving in the body. Sending your awareness out into all the parts of the body, all the spaces. As we start to Deepen, deepen that inquiry, that curiosity around our inner experience. And we'll keep that going. You can reach over and find your yoga block or whatever substitute you're using. If you don't have a substitute there, you can just follow along with us with no prop underneath. I'm going to bring my yoga block to its second height. I'll use my hands behind me to get it right into the right place. I'm looking to have its edge, that's so the edge that's closest to me, right in the space where the neck meets the head. So adjust that, make sure you have something stable underneath you. You could also try your block in the lowest height if you prefer that. I'd like to have that nice little pressure of the edge of the yoga block underneath. And as we breathe here, you can keep the eyes closed. We'll simply rock the head from side to side across that front edge of the block or on the ground. A little bit of myofascial release for the neck. You might pause wherever you feel a little bit of tenderness. I know that this is a place where I certainly encounter some tender spots. You go nice and slow. You rock from one side to the other. Make your way back through to center. Pause there. See if you can allow the whole weight of the head to sink down into the block or into the floor underneath you. Feel the head totally supported. Wiggle the jaw a little side to side. Releasing as best you can any tension there through the face. And then go ahead and lift the head. We'll set our block off to the side. Head now comes back down to the mat. Pause there for just a moment.
and we'll use our block again. So I'll bring the feet to the mat, just so that I can lift the hips up and bring my block underneath the sacrum. So roughly in line with the hips, we'll have the low back off of the block so that it feels almost as though the low back could sink down towards the mat. Coming into a psoas stretch, a nice stretch for the whole space of the front of the hip. I'll extend my left leg out, heel can come to the mat. If it's hovering there, that's fine. As long as it's comfortable, you can always sneak something underneath the hip. And then I'll reach around my right calf as I draw the right knee in towards the chest. You can do all of this, of course, on the mat without the block. And this is my shape here. We'll keep a soft activation through the feet. Maybe you're already feeling a little bit of sensation there through the space of the front of the left hip. Allow the shoulders to be relaxed. Breathing in. Breathing out. This is a really nice one to do to repeat if you spend a lot of time during your day at a desk or sitting, just bringing our body into a different shape. One more big breath in here. We'll take this into our reclined shoelace pose. So I'll draw the left knee in close to the right. It'll be behind the right knee. And then bending at both knees, you'll see if you can grab around for the feet. So this pose does not need to be really precise. What we're really looking for is just a little bit of sensation through, you'll probably feel it in the outer right hip, maybe towards the back of the right hip. So you could have a more open shape. Maybe you bring the hands just to the thighs. I like to reach around for the feet if they're accessible there. You can even get a nice little stretch through the top of the feet if you hold on to the toes. We'll pause here for a few rounds of breath. Breathe into the belly on your inhale. And on your exhale, we'll release, unwind your shoelace, and we'll take our psoas stretch over towards the second side. So extend your right leg, right heel comes to the mat. You can keep it lifted. Hug the left knee in towards the chest. One more big breath into the belly. 
and we'll make our way into our reclined shoelace on the second side. So I lift the right knee up and it comes close to the left knee and behind. And then you can see if you can grab around for the feet or they can just hover there in space. Maybe use the hands to support the legs from the tops and the thighs. Don't worry too much about what your shapes look like. It's not important. What is important is your awareness as you are in those shapes, noticing where am I feeling the sensation? Where is the energy? Does it feel good in the body? more rounds of breath here. That's all part of building our sustainable home yoga practice. It's something we can keep coming back to hopefully for many years. One more breath in, and one more breath out. You can start to unwind the legs. We'll bring feet to the mat. And with the feet on the mat, press down so you can lift the hips up just enough to set your block aside. And you won't need it anymore, so I'm going to set mine all the way out of the way, come back to my bridge pose here. So feet on the mat, about hips distance apart. I like to bring them slightly wider and then allow the heels to turn out just a touch. We'll move here into a little bit of proprioception for the spine. So in other words, that awareness we have of the body, of where the body is in space. This is a really nice one to keep coming back to. So from your bridge pose, press down gently through the length of the arm, shoulder blades on the mat. As you take your breath in, you'll start to peel up from the tailbone. So tailbone is the first thing to lift. And then you'll work your way up the spine as you start to lift the spine off of the mat. Think about moving vertebra by vertebra. Pause there at the top and then we'll move down the opposite direction, lowering down from the top. So upper back, mid back, lowering down first. Imagine that you could plant each vertebra down on the mat individually. And that might be really challenging. So you can close the eyes and visualize. And there's actually a lot of power in just that visualization. So don't worry if there are places that feel like there's less awareness. Just gathering in all of that as information. Move with your own breath. And move as slowly as you can. So on your inhale, lifting from the bottom, moving up. And then from the top, lowering down vertebra by vertebra. So now the tailbone will be the last thing to reach the mat. Let's do one more. Wherever 
where you are, take one more full round. Feeling already a little bit of engagement through the quads. Those big muscles supporting you as you move the spine. We'll meet dark and neutral. Walk your feet further away from your glutes. Walk them quite a ways, maybe even towards the top of your mat. And we'll lift up from here, and we'll lift and hold. So now we're activating along the back of the body, activating the backs of the legs or hamstrings. So we'll take a breath in as you press down through the arms, through the palms, and then on your breath out, Lift up, lift the hips as high as you can. Then you won't come as high as you would in your regular yoga bridge pose. Press down into the feet as you feel the backs of the legs turn on. Maybe this is new to you if you've been doing yoga for a while now let's take one more breath round of breath feel the belly expand and rise up towards the ceiling as you inhale and exhale navel the spine and start to release see if you can release down to the mat nice and slow and then we'll hug one knee at a time in towards the chest Find a moment of stillness there. Feeling that energy down through the legs. We'll take this over into a recline twist. So knees over towards the left to start. Open the arms out wide. Maybe you take cactus arms if you have a little bit less space like I do here, or you can feel free to extend the arms out to a big wide T. You can always use that block in the shape to bring the block in between the knees or maybe underneath both for a little extra support so you can really sink in. back to that listening, that act of noticing. Use a big breath in to bring the knees back towards center, hug them in one more time to the chest, and then we'll take the knees over to the right. to the belly. Soften through the jaw one more time. Make your way back to center. 
knees into the chest one more time. You have two options um, here. We're going to make our way up and through to our downward dog. So we'll move into a seat first. You can either come over into your fetal pose and lift yourself up from there using the hands. Or if you like, maybe you want to create a little bit more energy in the body, you can rock front to back. So rocking front to back along the length of the spine. Don't worry about what it looks like or what particular shape you're aiming for. We're just looking for this sense of playfulness and movement. And then maybe from your rock, you find your way up in your seat or you come through your fetal position up to your seat. Come through to your hands and knees. And press the hips back and up for your downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a moment to bend the knees. Press into all ten fingerprints. Maybe you give your shoulders a little bit of extra space. Walk the hands a little wider towards the outer edges of the mat. We'll come into stillness for two full rounds of breath. On your exhale, make your way into plank pose. Bend the knees, look forwards. And come forwards to plank pose. Strong plank. We're pausing here just for a moment. Tapping into a little bit of strength, spreading the fingertips wide. Press the backs of the knees up towards the ceiling so you're really engaging through the legs. Inhale. On an exhale, lower the knees right underneath you. We're coming into our half push up, half chaturanga. Big breath in, on the breath out. You're lowering down onto your belly so you can send the elbows straight back behind for a more traditional. Yoga Chaturanga, or you can also send the elbows wide, lower down. We'll meet there on the belly. Now go ahead and start to hug the elbows in closer to the sides of the body. Hands are sort of roughly in line with the upper rib cage. Press down with the pubic bone and let that be the movement that sends you up into your low cobra. Inhale, think about broadening through the collarbones. Exhale to lower. We'll repeat that two more times. So we're really thinking about this little lift. So we don't need to come all the way up here into a really big stretch, but instead think more about that strength you need to support yourself here, low down in your cobra, Ujjangasana. Inhale, exhale to lower. One more time, press down to lift up. Long through the back of the neck. Exhale to release. Inhale, curl the toes under and send it back. Downward facing dog. Two rounds of breath here.
Inhale. Exhale, lower the knees. Child's pose. Reconnect, recenter. Drawing that awareness back. Into your inner world. We'll bring the hands out in front. Come onto the toes and then rock back onto the heels. Make your way into a forward fold at the back of your mat. Head is heavy. Take a moment to sway a little side to side. Feel the weight shift in your feet. And then from here, we'll walk our way forwards with the hands to our down dog. So I really like this little move here. As you feel all that stability through the feet. And you can, of course, be bending the knees generously. Walk the hands out and then send the hips back down dog. So no need for the heels to be reaching the mat, but allow them to be heavy so you have that feeling of stability through the low body. On an inhale, the right leg sweeps up behind you, three-legged dog. So the whole rest of the body there is staying exactly the same. Big inhale here. On your exhale, shift forward. Knee reaches towards the chest. Hug everything up and in. Think about your cat pose and tabletop. And then from there, see if you can step the right foot in between the hands. Take as many little steps as you need to get there. Pause, breathe in this low lunge, as you find your footing, find your stability, we'll start to move through our flow. Coming light on the fingertips. And then on a big breath in, as you root down, sweep the arms forwards, up and back, high lunge. Feel like you could lift up out of the low body as you send the arms up and overhead. Inhale. Exhale, open it up, plant the left foot behind you for warrior two. Strong and steady. Feel the right outer hip wrapping down and underneath you to support. Inhale. Exhale, straighten through the front leg. Extend the right fingertips further out in front of you. Shift into your Trikonasana triangle pose. If you've been here before and you tend to reach down quite a bit, see if you can back off ever so slightly so that you can feel that sense of lift as you ground down through the feet. And that'll be important for where we go next. So finding 
that grounding through the right foot, start to bring your gaze there out in front of the right foot. We're moving here into our half moon. So you can always use that block that we had before if you used it. And you can bring that out in front of you for the right hand. Otherwise, I'll send the left arm down along the left side and then start to lift and send the weight forward. You can bring fingertips to the mat. I like this variation here where we keep this long line through the lifted side. Left arm along the left side of the body and maybe you can even lift up here off of the right fingertips. Big breath in, a little challenge here. If you fall out, come right back to it. We'll start to bend through the right leg as we gently, or as best as we can, send the left foot towards the mat, reverse warrior. From reverse warrior, we're moving into high lunge, but at the back of the mat. So visualize first, see where you're going in your mind, and then we'll start to transition. Inhale, arm sweep up and overhead. Exhale, hands come down to the mat, frame the right foot, step it back to plank. Here we're moving through a vinyasa, or you can always go straight to downward facing dog. Lower the knees if you like, maybe under exhale you repeat that half chaturanga or half push up. For your heart opener, repeat your baby cobra, Bhujangasana. Or another option, play with your locust pose, sending the arms back along the sides of the body, activate through the fingertips, lift the thighs, knees, legs up off the mat. Strong through the belly, breathe in. Exhale to plant the palms, curl toes under, downward facing dog towards the back of the mat. And we'll repeat on the second side. Inhale, left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Breathe in. As you exhale, sending the knee towards the chest, come forwards. So now upper body is in plank. Think about rounding and lifting. One more moment here. And then send the left foot in between the hands. Pause here. Low lunge, finding that downward Movement to support. Grow light on the fingertips. When you're ready, big breath in, sends you up. High lunge. Breathing in, breathing out as you continue to observe. We're sending it into our warrior two. Plant your back foot as you send your arms out into your big T. Steady breath. Inhale. Use your exhale to straighten the front leg, and we're moving into triangle pose. Extend the left fingertips even further forwards than you had in warrior two, and open up. So again, give yourself a little space, lift up and out.
Inhale. We're moving now into our half moon, so grab your block if you like. Bring the gaze down, out in front of the left foot. Right arm comes along the side of the body as you lift off. Maybe the left fingertips even hover off the mat. Inhale. On your exhale, start to bend through the left leg. Landing as gently as you can for your reverse warrior. Coming in to your high lunge now, opposite side, so towards the front of the mat. Make your way there. Inhale. Exhale. Hands come to the mat, step it back. And we have one more opportunity for a vinyasa where we'll meet together in down dog. A full round of breath in your outer mood. My side out on the exhale. <sighs> Lower the knees. Find your way to your child's pose. This is our last shape before we come into Shavasana. Feel that energy gathering here as you draw the body into this condensed shape. Lift it up to move into our final resting pose, Shavasana. And I'll leave you here in just a moment or two, and you can spend as long as you like. I encourage you to stay for at least a few minutes. Maybe this is an opportunity to continue that practice of listening. Listening here in this moment of stillness and quiet. Feeling the body now as it rests, as the energy starts to settle, as we start to integrate everything that we have done throughout our practice, everything we've cultivated.
when you hear if you're also in your practice you can meet me in the seat we'll draw the hands to heart center Anjali Mudra the light in me bows to the light in you Namaste I'll see you next week